Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. So tonight we've got a special treat for you guys and that is an entry level budget CMOS camera. Now before we get into that, for those of you not familiar, uh, my name is Vlad. I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com where I do all kinds of fun telescope reviews and that type of deal. And also this YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, just in general, a little bit about me. Over the years, I've, over, I've owned over 100 scopes, uh, more accessories than I can count. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of an astronaut, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, so um, the Saibon SV-105 is what we're looking at tonight. Uh, Entry-level camera, these things are 59 bucks. Um, I mean, super inexpensive uh, or, you know, around that price range is what they usually sell for. Um, so now, yeah, let's pop this bad boy open and you'll know, kind of see see what's in there. Now, if you're not familiar, you know, about like, you know, what a CMOS camera is, a CMOS sensor is what they use on like pretty much any digital camera these days. So if you buy a DSLR, uh, you know, they use the same type of sensor as, you know, what this guy has. Uh, so instruction manual, um, pretty fine print, in, you know, in there. So. If uh, you wear eyeglasses or something, you know, you might have a tough time reading that. I'll, I'll throw that out there. A uh, nice long USB cord. Uh, I'm not sure how long this thing is. Um, but I'm guessing it's like a 10 footer or something. And it looks like it even has like a split so you can connect. Oh, it's probably, it's probably because one is used for data and the second one is used to provide more power for the camera. So you basically kind of need, I guess, like two USB plugs on your computer. So, you know, that's kind of good to keep in mind. But yeah, this thing is pretty long. It's probably a six foot actually. Uh, but that's, you know, that's kind of nice to have a longer cord. And last but not least, the camera itself. So this thing, actually, let's get rid of the box. Actually, before I do that, so one other thing that's in the box is like a little cleaning cloth so you could clean the, um, you know the lens on here so that's pretty cool but anyhow so camera wise you know it just has a single usb plug it's powered from the usb cable so you don't need to like you have a, a separate power adapter um and then yeah this is just an inch and a quarter uh form factor so this will plug into any telescope that uses an inch and a quarter focuser which is pretty much any telescope out there <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and then basically what this will allow you to do is they call it like an electronic eyepiece, um, which it kind of is for the moon and for the planets, which is actually what we're going to primarily test it on. Um, I'm, you know, I'm going to kind of nerd out a little bit and I'm actually going to try to do some deep sky with this as well and see if it's, you know, capable of doing some of the brighter stuff, just, you know, just see if it's possible. Not, not really what it's made for, so if it can do it, you know, it's really not what it's made for, but I think, you know... I think it might actually have a good shot. So anyhow, yeah, we're going to go outside, set up the mount, set up the scope, uh, plug this sucker in, you know, see what kind of images we can get out of it. All right, all right, guys. So we are outside. I've got the equipment set up behind us. Let's take a look at what we're using, and we'll get to trying to capture the moon out there. So basically, uh, GML with my Beater 5-inch refractor. Uh, we are very simply just going to put the camera, which is this guy here, you know, straight into the back of the scope and hopefully reach focus. If not, I might have to do an extension too, but we'll see. Uh, scope section already pointed at the moon, and um, I think I just need to turn on the tracking. That's what I forgot to do. So yeah, we'll get that going. And then, uh, yeah, the moon's out there. It's a little hazy out there right now, but I think this uh, little patch of clouds will clear pretty quick here, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to capture a cool you know image of the moon and later uh saturn and jupiter will be coming out there so we'll be able to hopefully get a capture of those guys as well so yeah, yeah i'm kind of excited to try this camera i mean a lot of people you know they're not really into doing pure visual observing you know they want to be able to capture and share the images and i mean this is a really inexpensive way to do that at least with the brighter objects. We'll see if, you know, he could do any deep sky. I'm kind of curious with this guy. Uh, so, yeah. Let me uh, actually go ahead and put this guy into the focuser. And uh, once I get sharp cap going on the computer there, we will uh, see if we can reach focus, basically. Okay, so got that sucker locked in, so we're good to go there. And then yeah, let's start up sharp cap and uh, 
Should be good to rock and roll. Alright guys, so we have the scope pointed close to the moon. So that guy there, that's the out of focus moon on the screen. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to adjust the focuser here on my scope, right? Um, and then I'll let you actually watch how it's kind of getting closer, hopefully, anyway, into focus. So I'm racking the focuser out, basically, and you're seeing, you know, exactly what I'm seeing on the screen of the laptop there. Alright, so I'm fully, uh, as you can see with the focuser, I'm fully racked out here, right? So it won't go out anymore and we're still not in focus. So that's pretty typical with like pretty much any astronomy camera. So you need an extension tube. Uh, if you have a Barlow lens that has a screw out uh, optical element, you can use that as an, ex as an extension tube as well. But now, yeah, let me run inside the garage, grab an extension tube. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get into focus. One sec. Alrighty, there she is. So actually, let me turn on the flash or six. So the extension tube is this guy right here. There's actually two of them uh, that I had just stacked. Uh, but anyway, it's just a hollow tube that allows the camera to be further out. Uh, again, if you have a Barlow lens, you can use that. If you don't have anything, you can use your star diagonal because uh, that will increase the light path too. Although that is not preferable to do because that's adding an extra mirror that can distort the image. Okay, so now I'm actually racking the focuser back in because it was too far out, right? And then, lo and behold, there she is, finally. The moment we've all been waiting for. It's the moon. <laughs> um, so, I'm kind of trying to look at the screen here on the laptop, and that's in pretty decent focus. So, let's decrease the exposure, right? Oh yeah, look at that. That's not half bad, and that's 50% zoom. So let's zoom in 100%. So, and what you're seeing right now is me recording the laptop screen, right? With my cell phone just live this is live what we're seeing through the telescope and actually um i don't know how well it's going to show up in the final video but that kind of like boiling over that you see that's actually just clouds uh passing through the moon. So that's kind of cool right i mean you know if, if you've never seen that through the scope uh that's pretty sweet and actually let's uh so i'm gonna pan out to the other side of where the moon actually is so you kind of see you know, the clouds that I'm talking about. So there's a little bit of cloud cover kind of rolling through, right? And you're seeing that, you know, here through the telescope. Um, yeah, it's pretty rad. <laughs> kind of a cool effect if you've never seen that, like if you're newer to scopes and that type of deal. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, you know, you could share the view of the moon, you know, with your friends. And, you know, normally it'll, it'll actually get sharper once the clouds kind of, you know, roll through. And so, you know, besides just kind of looking at the moon like this, of course, you know, you could take a snapshot, right? And I'll just, you know, so right now I'll save the picture. Actually, let's take a look at the picture. Uh, so yeah, here's the picture of the moon that, you know, we just saved and you could email this, you know, post this on Facebook or, you know, do whatever you want to do with it, right? So that's pretty sweet. Uh, the other kind of a little bit more advanced and kind of more technical thing is that you could do a video capture and then you could use some software to process these images, right? Uh, to make a much nicer image. Essentially what it does is it'll uh, select the best frames, uh, throw out the ones that weren't as sharp and uh you know and get you a much prettier picture than what you can see just normally all right so i'm just you know decreasing the uh, exposure there so yeah pretty sweet so um i'm gonna wait for the little clouds to pass right and then once they do i'm gonna do a capture of the moon you know with that video deal that i said and then i'll do um a quick you know process on the image and you know hopefully come up with something uh that looks you know pretty presentable for you guys so yeah 
Alright, and then after I set the camera down, I actually messed with the focuser on the scope, you know, just a tad. Um, and actually, I just got a much sharper image just from doing that, <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so we're again, we're 100% zoomed in right now. Um, yeah, I mean, for being like a uh, super entry level camera, I mean, the body of it is made out of metal. Um, and yeah, so first impression, I mean, geez, that's, you know, that's not any worse of an image than I get from my ZWO cameras that are like a thousand bucks, you know, at least when it comes to the moon, where, you know, <laughs> not, not, not probably not in general, like as far as when it comes to deep sky, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's not bad at all. So yeah, I'll do that video and then uh, I'll post a uh, processed image into this uh, video in just a second. Alright, alright guys, so it's the next morning already. Um, I got up at 3 a.m. just for you guys. So it's actually interesting enough, it's already dawn kind of going on out there. Sun's starting to slowly creep up. Um, I just got the scope pointed at... Uh, so the brighter one there, that's Jupiter. We're pointed at the dimmer star that's, uh, well, quote-unquote, star, it's a planet, right? <laughs> but, um, at Saturn, up there, so, yeah, let me start up the laptop here, and, uh, we'll see what we could do on this gun. Alright, alright, guys, um, uh, so I did try to do some deep sky observe, uh, or, uh, EA, I guess, with this camera, um, Actually, as it turns out, you cannot go past more than half a second of exposure, even if you turn on LX mode. So, yeah, unfortunately with this guy, um, you are kind of limited to uh, the planets um, and the moon, which is, you know, which is what it's made for, so... I just did not realize that it'd be limited to... Uh, only a half a second exposure, but anyhow, yeah, there's Saturn on the screen for you. Um, let's uh, try to center it up real quick. So, I mean, you know, pretty obviously, you could see the rings of Saturn, you know, just right off the bat, right? So, that's pretty sweet. Um, so this is uh, the scope, you know, it's got a focal length of about 800, and so we are in maximum zoom right now, right? So, you know, you do kind of have to anticipate that if you want, if your kind of interest is imaging the planets, right? And um, if you have a scope that's below a thousand millimeters, the image scale is going to be pretty small, so I mean, that's pretty... Um, so I'm kind of messing with the focus of the scope right now. So that's pretty, you know, that's pretty tiny. Realistically, this is um, way too small of an image scale to get any, you know, like, decent amount of detail. You really need more image scale this. Now, if you have an SCT, like, like I'd say, if you have um, an 8-inch SCT, like the next to 8 SC, um, you're going to have more than twice the focal length just in the default consider configuration, so that's, you know, that's going to be a lot better already. Um, I am actually going to switch out and put in a 2x Barlow, which essentially, you know, makes the image twice as big, so that'll, give me, that'll get me to um, roughly, I think it's about 1900 millimeters with the scope. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'll resume the video here. Alright, so here she is. So this is, you know, a comparison for image scale, right? So I've got the, um, the 2x Barlow there. 
um, in front of the camera, right? So yeah, you see how much bigger the image is now? So this is the same thing. This is, you know, at 100 zoom basically. <clears throat> so same image scale. So what I'm actually going to do is take a quick snapshot at this, um, of the planet. Um, you know, the scene tonight, unfortunately, is not that great, so it's not, um, I'm going to center this up a little bit. Um, it doesn't look, you know, like there's a super amazing amount of detail. I mean, obviously you can see the rings of Saturn, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I see kind of how it's jumping around and kind of blurry. Um, that's because of the scene. It's basically the steadiness of the air is just not super great tonight. Um, I mean, part of the issue is that the planets are really low right now um, to the horizon. Um, if you're in the northern hemisphere, if you're in the sun, in the, if you're in the southern hemisphere, uh, that'd be much higher. Um, and you know, we don't like you guys. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We love you guys uh, from the south. Uh, I actually have dreams of going out there and seeing your guys' night nice sky. Uh, but yeah, the planets are pretty low in the northern hemisphere, and uh, this isn't. 2021. Um, anyhow, so I'm going to take a short uh, video, a capture. I'm um, going to center it up, take a short capture, and then I'll do a process on Saturn as well. Um, and then, yeah, I'll post that in that video here, and we'll kind of uh, start to bring the ship home and summarize what I think about the scam in general. Alright guys, as you can see, it's a beautiful morning out here already. Um, so, uh, what's the conclusion on the cam? Well, as you saw from the pictures, I mean, you can get some pretty cool images with it. I mean, realistically, if you're in the market for a camera that's, uh, you know, geared towards the moon and photographing the planets, if that's kind of, you know, what your aim is. I mean, for the price point, I mean, yeah, it's a, you know, well-constructed camera. Uh, the resolution is pretty good on its two megapixels. I believe it's 1920 by 1080 is what the resolution is. Um, oh, and then one other thing that I did want to remark on, my Surface Pro only has one USB plug. It works just fine just by plugging one one of these cables, so it doesn't look like you really need to, you know, have them both plug in for the extra power, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, pretty cool camera, um, I mean definitely a great price point on it, um, I would really recommend it if you guys are looking for a budget camera, you know, again for the solar system type of objects. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed, please consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.